In this video, we are gonna turn this photo into this photo. Uh, this one was submitted by Catherine Spangler, so thank you, Catherine. Uh, I think it's a great photo, has a lot of great elements to it, and we're just going to add a little bit of life, depth, and dimension to it. Uh, using mostly Lightroom, you'll see at the end I'm gonna jump into Photoshop. That's more of an optional step, just depending on how you like to edit your photos. All that said, I love these before and afters. I love just uh, showing the whole workflow from start to finish, so let's go ahead and jump in. First things first is I usually start over here in the basic panel, just any any overall global changes. There, there's actually not too much. It's 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 well exposed. So for me, I'm thinking more more selective local changes than doing anything globally. I might overall just make it a little bit brighter, but um, I, we're, we're gonna leave the basic panel alone for now. Let's go down to, uh, to lens corrections here, turn on any profile corrections. Might get rid of a little bit of vignetting that's up there and it's, it's not, but uh, we can also just go in here and probably there's not gonna be too much harm in just cropping uh, a little bit of that edge vignetting that we had on the corners there out of the photo. Um, for me, the, the bulk of the changes are gonna come um, in removing a little bit of a distraction over here on the left-hand side, and then just working with a little bit of light and balance to, to, give, us a, to give us something a little bit more, you know, more of a hook to, to look at here. So uh, I think the first thing I'll head over to do is let's just do some distraction removal. I'm gonna use that new remove eraser tool here with the generative AI. Uh, I'm gonna turn object aware off and then I'm just gonna paint over on this left-hand side. So this is something that yeah, I think we, we probably would have usually gone to Photoshop for, but uh, I think we should be able to get done here inside of Lightroom pretty easily. It's not that big of an area and I think Lightroom will take care of it. Can scroll through our options in that panel over here just to see what we have, but I think, yeah, I think uh, that looks good to me. Just, just anything to, to take take our eyes away so it's a little bit more continuous over there and it didn't have that break and uh, whatever was at the edges there. There's a little wire up there so we can go and just paint over that. And again, that should go away pretty easily as well. So uh, just between getting rid of those two things, that's, you know, I know we're gonna end up in Photoshop anyway, just for, for one thing at the end. Well, actually it'll be an optional thing, but uh, overall just not having to go over there to remove that is a big help because before that came out and I had edited this photo, I, I did need to go to Photoshop. Okay, let's head over to our masking tools. Uh, a couple things I wanna do, draw a little bit more attention um, to some of the trees up here, add a little bit more light in the foreground. So let's go to our object selection tool. And the way that works is we just go over here and just brush over an area. Should do a pretty good job of selecting those trees. And now I can make them a little bit brighter, open up the shadows, uh, maybe even go to color, enhance the saturation, make them warmer, something along those lines. Uh, from here, I think, let's go back over, let's create another new mask. I would go to select sky and a quick selection of the sky. Tone that down just a little bit, bring the highlights down, bring the exposure down just a hair. Um, then I'm gonna go over here, let's create another new mask. And so let's go to, here's what we're gonna have to do. Cause I wanna get a selection of the foreground, but I also want a selection of uh, what we have over here. So let's just go back over here to our object selection tool. And that should, that should give us a good, good selection of all that. I don't even have to select the whole thing. Again, increase that exposure a little bit. And then from here, what I'll do is let's make a duplicate of this mask. So I'm just gonna hit duplicate. So now I have a copy of it. And then I'm gonna go to the pop-out menu and choose invert. So that's gonna give me everything but. But the problem is, is if I hover over, you can see it includes the sky and the trees. So all we have to do now is just, just subtract those if we just wanna get that foreground area. So I'll go to subtract sky, and then I'll get rid of the sky. And then I'll go to subtract again. And then I'm just gonna use that same, remember we wanna remove the trees. We know that the object selection tool did a really good job on, on selecting the tree. So I'm just gonna go just remove that. So now when I hover over that mask, you'll see we have a good mask of the foreground here. And then in this case, I don't necessarily wanna make it brighter. 
I would want to maybe push the whites a little bit, pull back on those blacks, just give it a little bit more contrast. I do have a very quick word from our sponsor, which is I, I jumped into Photoshop here. I do have a Photoshop how-to course, which has been an incredibly popular course, very affordable course. And it's the kind of thing that if you got the basics of Photoshop down, you don't want a beginner's course. You just want to know how to do stuff, okay? Um, and you don't want to necessarily get 20 different answers on how to do things because then that gets you working in all different ways. So in this course, it's a very condensed way how to do things. You get the same workflow from the same person. Um, there's a ton of how-tos in there, everything from selections, masking, replacing backgrounds, noise reduction, sharpening, restoring old photos, making signatures. There's a ton of stuff in there. The website will tell you everything you need to know, but I do hope you'll swing by and check that one out because um, if you want to, that is the next level in Photoshop. Once you know the tools, to do things. It's how to do things that get you better and better at Photoshop, more familiar with those things so that, uh, you know, the next time a project comes up, you already know, kind of hit the ground running and you can move on. So if I were to turn the masking tool on and off, if I would just turn everything on and off, you'll see the bulk of the changes, that's our before, that's our after. Again, before and then after. So to me, just it's got a little bit more contrast, a little bit more depth dimension to it. Um, we are going to take a look at the trees. There's a little bit of a halo on our trees. Okay. And, and you'll see if I were to do, if I were to do a really aggressive adjustment to it, you'll see it even more. Um, so that, that's the first thing. A lot of people will ask, I get a halo around. You'll get that with a very aggressive adjustment. And the answer is, is don't do that aggressive adjustment, but I still see a little bit, um, a little bit of some white area inside of there. So if that happens, again, it's not quite as bad here, but what you can go do is what we did before, subtract and then select sky. So remove the sky from it. And that should take care of a lot of that. If you still see a halo, then you've gone too aggressive with the adjustment. And really the answer is, is you've done probably something pretty unnatural to it. So I would suggest pulling back a little bit. Okay, just a little bit there. All right, let's take a look here. So if I hit the backslash key, we have an overall before and then after. So before, after, uh, let's see here. Let's head back to basic. I think from a whole, I might actually want to pull the exposure back and then push the whites up a little bit. Another little trick is, is after I do all of those adjustments with the masking, sometimes I'll come back here and hit auto just to see what it does. And sometimes it gives me a good start on, I'm almost always gonna pull every setting back, especially whites for me. To me, auto always pushes the whites a little bit too high, but uh, I can dial back on just about every setting, but it gives me a really good starting place um, as a whole to, to look at the photo. And I think that does a nice job there. Again, just looking for contrast, depth, dimension, before, see very, very flat, great photo, great composition, great everything, just a little bit flat. So we're just trying to add a little bit of life to it. So again, before and then after. Um, from here, a couple things that I might do. So all of these lines, I really like all these lines and I like, I, I, I like the, I like kind of the interest that it adds into the photo. It almost, if you were to use the term, I hate because it's such a cliche, leading lines, but um, it, it does. It, it gives us it gives us some 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 things to follow into the photo. So if I were to make this a little bit darker, and then come back here to create a new mask, I'm getting into some optional. We'll call them optional changes here. Okay, this is if you know again everybody's everybody's uh, level of of how far they want to push the photo is is a little bit different, but I would go take some radial gradients and just add a little bit of interest. Just increase the exposure a little bit. Go to the temperature a little bit. And actually sometimes rather than doing exposure, sometimes I'll do whites and it looks a little bit more natural. Exposure will tend to make things look, I, I use the term milky in some ways. It's just, they, they get this very milky kind of flat, bright look to them though. Um, and that's not always what we want. So we'll go over here and I'll click on that one. I'll choose duplicate. And then let's just grab that one. We'll move it, rotate it a little bit on the lines. Click the pop-up menu, choose duplicate again. And then 
move those lines. I'll do it one more time, but you, you get the idea. You can do this uh, as many times as you might need to for, for whatever specific photo you happen to be working on. But again, just rotate it a little bit. Maybe even make that one a little bit wider. And especially in those brighter areas. Okay. That one's probably a little too bright. So, so again, it just gives us, it, it enhances some of those lines. Again, I always look at the photo, what, what's grabbing my attention. Whatever is grabbing my attention, sometimes I'll try to enhance and, and even bring more attention to it. So it, those might not grab your attention. So it's just, you know, my personal opinion on that one. But again, we'll turn those off and then back on, off, back on. So you can see that the masking is a, uh, is a huge factor here. If you wanted to be done in Lightroom, I would probably come over to effects, add a little bit of a vignette onto the photo here just to darken the edges. And again, we might have to go in and crop out a little bit of that lens, uh, that lens uh, that you can see the, the darker edges that we have over there. Another option would be is go try to take your uh, generative remove erase tool here and just paint over those edges, see if that helps. And that sometimes could do the trick too, because it's really the it's really those top two corners that were bugging me up there. Um, it didn't appear that any lens corrections were going to fix it. So that's an option for you, but a little bit of a vignette, just a little bit of edge darkening vignette. Um, if I could go back, I'd go back to my masks, go back to those trees. They're just a little too bright for me. Maybe right around there. Okay. Um, so if I hit the backslash key, that's before, that's after. We could be done here. So for the purists that don't want to do what I'm about to do next, we could absolutely be done here. And I think it's a nice edit. I think we, I think we kept, kept the, the overall photo, the composition, as I said, was great. Just added a little bit of depth and dimension to it. However, if you're willing to go the extra step, um, again, totally, totally voluntary. I know not everybody likes to do this, but we're going to go in Photoshop and do a sky replacement because I think the sky is such a key part of every outdoor photo. You can't get around it. It's it's the it's it's what can make or break an outdoor photo. So for those of you that are okay with the sky replacement, we can go this route. If you're not, then just stop watching right now. Tutorial's over, but head over here to the edit menu. And no need to leave a comment of your uh of 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 how much you don't like sky replacements. We all get it. Um, but we'll go over here, edit sky replacement. Since it's a dark gray sky, it's just kind of blah. So this adding something with more interest to it could help. Okay. So I would still go look for a stormy sky. Adobe's got some default spectacular ones here. I think um, either one, I think actually this one could work pretty cool too. It's a little bit much over here, but I think it could still get away with it. But anything that's a little bit stormy, um, if you hit the website, you go into the preset section. I've got some overcast skies on there as well. So uh, some different ones that you can take a look at if you wanted to uh, get your own or if you have or have made your own, then just feel free to take a scroll through them. But I'm definitely gonna have to look for something that's gray. I'm just trying to take some block gray clouds and uh, give them just do something a little bit more with it. So we'll just go do the Adobe Spectacular one because I think that one actually looked pretty good. Okay, we can just click OK there and you can see that's before our sky replacement, that's after. So just adding a little bit more interest into the sky um, from some pretty flat clouds that we had in there. And then from there, if you wanna get back, all you gotta do is just go file, save, and that'll bring you back over to Lightroom. Uh, speaking of Lightroom, so if you're a Lightroom or even Adobe Camera Raw user, basically any Adobe Raw editor, there's some really interesting color controls. I wouldn't have to work with them too much in this photo, but uh, there are some great color controls that allow you to, to work with your color in different ways. I actually have a video that I did a while back, still very, very applicable today. So if you're looking for a video to watch next, that's a great place to go.